Episode 7, Why Black Lives Matter and How Writers and Readers Can Help. Hello, loves. I'm Sarah Gomez, and I'm a bit discouraged. I typically pose content on this podcast talking about reading and writing romance, but I felt this one was a bit more broad in social terms. So I wanted to make it more of an open discussion. This isn't going to be easy, and if you'll hear me out for just a little bit, I'm hoping you can walk away a little bit more informed than you were before. I want to talk about why lending our voice as a collective to the Black Lives Matter movement is so important. It's about equality. And I hear a lot of discourse around the phrase, all lives matter. I get where they're coming from, but that's where equality hasn't been achieved. The Black community still faces systemic oppression and racial profiling in their day-to-day life even weathering microaggressions that are thrown out by acquaintances and colleagues. That is why Black Lives Matter, and it's important that we understand what that phrase is conveying. When using the phrase or argument of all lives matter instead, it's disregarding the divide that racial discrimination has created in our judicial and economic systems. It's only perpetuating the issue of racial injustice by ignoring it. It's basically saying, I think it's fine, then carrying on as if nothing happened. I'm not a psychologist, but I will try to break the concept down. Humans are predisposed to social categorization, oversimplified, It's a way of saying we put ourselves into groups based on race, religion, gender, etc. We have an unconscious bias towards others who are different from us due to outside influences we grew up with. It's that bias that makes people clutch their purses or wallets tighter around minorities. It's that bias that keeps some white folks from going to an area primarily made up of minorities or labeling said area the rough neighborhood. If you find yourself staring a little too long at a complete stranger of another race or religion and assuming stereotypes, that's a disposition of an unconscious bias. Here's the thing. The black community faces this every day. Just to give you a little insight, I once asked my friend why he never showed anger at work. Most of the time, he walked out of a room instead. I could tell he got just as frustrated and upset as everyone else on our team. You see, we work together as colleagues. He said it was because he didn't want to get a reputation of the angry black man because he knew that's the narrative people would play into. Just because he was a black man that showed a bit of irritation in a situation anyone would show, he was fearful others might stereotype him. He had been with a company for his entire career, and he was still worried colleagues would stereotype him from showing one moment of anger. That's not a situation that anyone who is white would face, And we don't ever have to necessarily worry about being stereotyped in that way. When we subject others to a racial bias or caricatures, we are accepting this subconscious understanding that treating people as less than or not good enough is okay behavior. And it's not. It all boils down to empathy. We have to dismantle the current prejudice system because hatred and brutality are never the answer. And ignoring the issue only stops progress. We may never fully understand, but we can stand with the black community. So, what can we do as writers and readers to help? Change starts with us. 
it starts with the way we think and our actions. It's important that we break the cycle of racial bias with due diligence of education and action. There are several actions we can take in the long and short term to create change and progress. I've compiled a list of ideas and suggestions that may be helpful for the short term. Number one, some people may not be able to join peaceful protests, and that's okay. You can still contribute to Black Lives Matter through monetary donations of civil liberty organizations and bail money for protesters, as well as volunteering and activism. It's important that we provide support financially so the movement stays strong and doesn't continue to get pushed to the side as another generation's problem. I'm including links below for resources of where you can find these organizations. Number two, it's crucial that we support the black community. Reading books by black authors and anti-racism books is a great start. A handful of great books I recommend, both nonfiction and fiction, are Ibram X. Kendi's How to Be Anti-Racist, Angie Thomas's The Hate You Give, and Malcolm Gladwell's Talking to Strangers. I have also included another link below to an article with more suggested reads. If you still aren't sure what kind of book to read, be sure to consult your local librarian or your favorite bookstore. Say you mainly stay within the realm of romance, since this is a romance podcast. How about reading a romance by a Black author about a Black heroine with the perfect amount of steam and feels? May I suggest Queen Move by Kennedy Ryan. Reading a book by a BIPOC author, that is a Black Indigenous People of Color author, with a protagonist that looks different from you, is a huge win. It's about expanding our mindset to not think about people as only white, but to recognize and value the experiences of others, many of which are different from our own. Be sure to add your new favorites to your bookshelf and follow authors you enjoy to read more of their works. This can become a long-term goal as well. Number three, search out and support Black-owned businesses, both in your local area and online. We can uplift one another by letting our Black neighbors know we see and hear them. We should strive to actively listen and educate ourselves on how to be inclusive within our community. And one direct and sustainable way to do that is to support and highlight Black-owned businesses. There's another link below with a fantastic list of Black-owned businesses in different retail categories. Another easy way to find Black-owned businesses locally? Google it! Contributing to these businesses can also be a great way to support long-term as well. Number four. Finally, vote! It's an election year. This is a time for action. The simplest action is to vote. Our current leadership has made it okay for people to act on their hate and has actively divided the nation. I once heard a perfect quote that sums it up. A community will never rise above the level of its leader. We're seeing it played out in the media every day. Make sure you let your voice be heard, register to vote, and show up at the polls. It'll take a lot more to heal our country than voting out bad leadership, but it's a step in the right direction. For the long term. Number one, as writers and readers, we have a voice and a platform, no matter how big or small. It's important that we use those tools to uplift BIPOC writers content creators, and activists. 
if you read a book by a black author that is impactful for you, leave a review, share an appreciation post for their work, or give word of mouth recommendations to your friends and colleagues. It's important that we engage with content minority communities produce in order to encourage algorithms and promote important narratives. And as much as I absolutely hate to say it, a recommendation from someone who is white might go further with specific audiences. Number two. Something else to consider is how we are representing any minority communities within our writing. The danger of misrepresentation isn't just the overt oppression or discrimination of one group of people. The danger can be found in unconsciously perpetuating stereotypes and caricatures of a group of people that you have no personal ties to and are not part of the community. Or even worse, excluding groups of people entirely and omitting their existence from books. When you have a readership or backing from an audience, it's important to use that privilege wisely. Are you presenting these characters in a fully realized way that is respectful? Nobody's asking for 100% accuracy. Everyone has different experiences, but it's important not to boil life experience to a handful of negative, prejudiced ideas. How do you best curb this? Do research and ask people within the community about their experiences. Be sure to get beta readers or critique partners of different backgrounds to make sure any characters in your books feel authentic. Writing or promoting books with harmful stereotypes can negatively influence readers, especially those who lack real cultural references or have a disposition to a stereotypical way of thinking. Number three. That leads me into my next point. We may have to have tough conversations with family and friends. I'm not saying to be aggressive or confrontational about racist remarks, but approach the topic with a calm, confident demeanor. If someone you're close to makes prejudice remarks, be sure to talk to them about it and tell them it's not okay to say and really, it never was. Take them aside privately. Give them only facts about why it's wrong to say those things and try to stay rational. Don't engage in any attempt to escalate. It will only make things worse. Your loved ones may take well to it, but if not, it's important to point out the behavior and halt it. Always aim to positively influence where possible. As a final thought, my mama always taught me to leave a place a little better than you found it. It's crucial that we use our platforms and privilege to fight for the equality of our black neighbors, friends, colleagues, and collaborators. This way, we can leave our loved ones and family a better world than what we had. I will leave you with a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. who said it best. In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies but the silence of our friends.